keep this really simple here. Uh, why don't you just explain why people in this room need artificial intelligence for hiring? Absolutely. Thanks so much for yeah. having me here, Steve, and thank you all for, for being here. At a very high level, I think agents are the future. Uh, I think it's no question many of you are probably thinking about how to use AI agents in your enterprises right now. Um, in 2022, I was a computer science PhD at Stanford working on some of the foundational research in AI agents at the time. And I realized right before ChatGPT came out that we had reached a point where this was no longer a question of an academic toy problem, but something that would significantly impact society in the next few years. And uh, you know, of course, we, we thought about what are the areas that can have the most impact with AI agents. And you think, well, there's customer success, which many of you are probably thinking about, and there are many applications there. But it turns out there's this much bigger industry right now um, that makes combined double the revenue of all the SaaS companies in the world. And 90% of your companies all use it, which is recruiting agencies. And statistically speaking, most of you probably don't enjoy your experience with recruiting agencies. And I think that's where AI agents will really make a difference, not only helping companies deploy AI early on, but also helping them hire better, faster, cheaper. So help me understand like, literally how this works, because I can't listen to a podcast without a commercial for Indeed popping up saying they can do exactly what you said. You're going to sure. get a gazillion resumes. We're going to find you the right candidate out of that you know, pile. And even, let's go back decades. Monster.com, that was yeah. their promise as well. Have they not fulfilled that promise? And what do you do better with artificial intelligence than these other competitors? Absolutely. I think of it as a difference between tools for recruiting and actually a recruiter, right? So there are job boards like Indeed. Mm -hmm. There are other platforms like Monster. I would sort of broadly LinkedIn. put these all as job, LinkedIn job boards, right? You've all probably posted on a job board before. You get applicants. You have to filter through the applicants. And the truth is most companies are not finding the people that they want through the job board, which is why your companies have referral programs, why you go to recruiting agencies, why you have internal recruiters to start. And um, the potential, I think, for AI is to actually sit one level higher to really do the job that a recruiter does today. Um, and so let's say you, Steve, are looking for a software engineer for whatever reason. AI It'll can you, actually I'm totally help you. That, by the way. <laughs> You'd be surprised by the types of people we've hired um, with our AI, but uh, let's say you're looking for a software engineer today. AI can actually help you go, and traditionally a recruiter might take, let's say, 10 hours to look through 1,000 resumes for you. We can actually look over a billion people across the public web in less than 10 minutes, help you figure out exactly who you're looking for. That's the faster, cheaper part. But one level further, I think AI agents also have the potential to build better experiences for companies. So your candidates now, the, when they're interested, the AI is replying back to them the same day that they're actually emailing you. So you're not ghosting candidates, leaving them in the pipeline. And, and um, you know, I think a lot of people right now think about AI agents as how do we automate workflows that exist today. But I think the next stage will be how do we actually make those workflows even better? And how do we actually add the scaling factor to companies so that they can grow faster by turning on and off AI agents as they grow? Let's stick with the software engineer example. Yeah, I'm hiring a software engineer. What am I telling the artificial intelligence to look for? And sure. at the same time, how do you avoid people from gaming the resumes just to stuff it with keywords that the AI would recognize to bubble them to the top? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. One of the, traditionally how, how hiring works is you, let's say you're looking for that software engineer, you would say, okay, I want to find a great software engineer. I'm going to find people who work at Google and have the title software engineer. But what happens is you're missing out on maybe 90% of the qualified candidates because there are people who maybe call themselves a member of technical staff, which is, for example, what OpenAI calls a lot of their engineers. Or there you might have people who don't work at Google who are equally qualified. For example, we recently hired for one of our customers someone whose first job out of college was being a UPS driver, but it turns out they're crushing it at being a great software engineer at their current job. And so AI helps you sort of open the aperture of the candidates that you otherwise wouldn't find. Um, and then actually be able to engage those by essentially you can reach out to them on email, LinkedIn, whatever it is, and actually get them into the process. So this is, uh, this is back in the days of, you can call it AI, you call it machine learning, you call it an algorithm, whatever. Uh, some of the criticism that comes out when, this, when these technologies emerge, we've seen it on Facebook, we've seen it on Google, is the inherent bias. The people who are creating these algorithms, the people who are creating these large language models usually look like me. And that can kind of lead to 
uh, bias, you know, throughout their their systems. Uh, what? How do you guys make sure that is not happening? Obviously, a resume you can't necessarily tell everything about one person. How is the sure. AI solving for that then? Sure. So I'll be the first to say that AI is imperfect. Um, we're we're continuing to think about how do we make AI less biased and how do we make these systems more fair for everyone. Um, what I can say though is that right now, if you work with a human recruiter, you probably are only meeting 10% of the qualified candidates. And what my hope for AI and what we've seen is that you can actually take that 10% and now engage maybe 50 to 60 to 70%. And over time, engage more and more of the right candidates that are fit. And traditionally, the 50 to 60% that are, you're leaving out are folks who don't have that traditional background. And these tend to be more underrepresented individuals. So folks who maybe are in the Midwest and um, like they're, they're, they have an amazing GitHub repository with projects, but you're not finding them because their keyword doesn't show software engineer today. And that, I think, is really the opportunity of, one, how do we open the talent aperture so companies are seeing more candidates that are qualified, which isn't just a matter of DEI, by the way. It's more about how do you actually, you're now hiring better people, you're hiring fast, and you're able to scale your organizations quicker. So there's a top-line impact there. Um, and then the second piece, you know, I think a lot of people talk about trust with AI. And I think one of the big challenges all AI agents are facing right now is this idea that um, I, I read a quote recently from the CEO of Ernst Young where he was like, 90% of companies want to deploy AI, and it's not a lack of desire that they don't, but a lack of trust. And the reason why you can't trust these models right now is at every step of the process, if you're trying to automate a single workflow, let's say there are 10 steps. At each step, you're 90% accurate. By the end of the 10 steps, you can probably only do this whole thing perfectly end to end in less than 10% of the time. And that's just mathematically true. And so what happens with Moonhub, actually, how we deploy these agents is we have the AI, but it also works in tandem with an expert human recruiter who's helping deploy the AI. So it's sort of checking the work of the AI at each step so you get a trusted experience. Now, presumably, this is, you kind of alluded to this, cheaper than going the traditional yeah. route of hiring an external recruiting firm or even internally. Um, how do you measure if it's working, though? What, 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 like, what metrics are you guys looking for to make sure your clients are actually yeah. seeing what they want to see out of it? Yeah. Besides just saying, yes, I made an offer letter to this person. Yeah. So a couple of metrics. The first is how many candidates are we actually seeing top of funnel that you haven't seen before, right? So typically when they're coming to us, they've tried referrals, all these other methods, and they say, hey, you know, it's been two months. I haven't found this person. I really need to find them. It's a, it's a matter of, um, of it's important for our business. And so there it's, OK, how many candidates can we introduce you to every single week that you haven't met before? That's what we call like the volume, right? And then now it's, and then the second is the quality piece. How many of the candidates that we're introducing to you are you actually going to interview? So are these candidates that are aligned with what you're looking for? And then once you're, and then of course it goes all the way to the hire phase, and once you hire the candidate, how many of those candidates are actually staying with your company in, in, for an extended period of time? And that sort of gets you, okay, opening the aperture, higher quality, and ultimately retention.